Hello. Um, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to our session of Getting Started with your first MRTK3 project. After hearing about all the new architectural improvements and the features in MRTK3, may, many of you may start wondering, how do we kick, up, uh, kick off our first project? So in this session, David and I will walk you through all the necessary steps you need to place yourself in a great position to build your first app with MRTK3. So let's get started. So first, a bit of introduction of myself. I am Max Wang, a software engineer on the Mixed Reality Toolkit team at Microsoft. I have been a longtime user of MRTK myself, starting back to the Holo Toolkit days. I got into the land of XR when I was still in high school and became a HoloLens developer myself during my college years. Right after that, I joined Microsoft and landed on this awesome team. I am very passionate at, about bringing the beauty and power of mixed reality to more people. And please welcome Dave. Hi, I'm Dave, an engineer on the Mixed Reality Toolkit team. I'm sorry I couldn't be with you in person today to experience Dev Days and celebrate the exciting future ahead with MRTK3. During my career at Microsoft, I've had the pleasure to work on many groundbreaking products and have seen the industry evolve from the command line interfaces of the early 1990s to the holograms of today. I'd like to start off by saying that over the past few years, the community has provided some excellent contributions to MRTK, not the least of which is feedback. Some of the most common feedback is around the area of what could be done better. I'm happy to say that we have heard the feedback loud and clear and have taken it to heart. Over the past year or so, MRTK3 has become more modular, it's easier to customize and extend, it's faster, and it takes advantage of new technologies and innovations such as OpenXR. We're also working to solve some of the hardest problems like data-driven UI, theming, and accessibility in immersive applications. At the heart of the MRTK3 architecture are Unity's input system, XR management system, and XR interaction toolkit, or XRI. MRTK is an extension of Unity's platform and has been re-architected to give you, the developer, more control over your project. Gone are the days of MRTK taking over your project hierarchy. You are now in control of the visualizations you would like to see. If you just want to get the data, that's a possibility. If you'd like to use some built-in visualizations, you can drag them into your project hierarchy. MRTK has been built around you and the feedback you have given us. As I mentioned earlier, OpenXR and Unity are at the center of the new MRTK, which through the power of the OpenXR specification will allow MRTK3 to reach new devices as they're created with minimal, if any, code change on our part or yours. MRTK components are already being used in enterprise scale applications, and we continue to push the boundaries for what mixed reality can become. To make all of this possible, there are a few software requirements, starting with the mixed reality feature tool. I will talk more about this tool in a few moments. You may be asking, hey Dave, what version of Unity do I need for the new MRTK? MRTK3 supports the Unity 2020 and 2021 LTS releases or one of the newer tech branch releases. Once a Unity release enters long-term support, MRTK deprioritizes fixes for the previous tech branches. There are a number of packages that are required most of which will be imported automatically when you add MRTK3 to your project using the Mixed Reality feature tool. I would like to call out in particular the Mixed Reality OpenXR plugin, 
which must be installed from the Mixed Reality Feature tool. This brings uh, hand control and eye tracking into uh, Mixed Reality. Speaking of packages, let's talk about the new package structure for MR2K3. MR2K3 is moving to a system of individual package versions. As you can see from the image to the right, the accessibility and data package, being completely new features, are being released as version 1, while others, such as core definitions, are releasing as version 3. We have definitely heard the feedback that the MR2K v2 package versions do not provide adequate information about the magnitude of changes they contain. Do they have breaking changes? Are they a simple bug fix? You can't really tell from the version number. To address this, we are fully adopting semantic versioning beginning with general availability of MRTK3. This will lead to improved servicing. You will no longer need to wait months to get a specific bug fix to be released as part of a predetermined cadence. We will be delivering patch versions on a much more frequent basis. One thing to be aware of is that there will no longer be a single umbrella MRTK version number. In fact, the three in MRTK3 is not a version, it is a generational number. This is the third architectural generation of MRTK, starting with Hollow Toolkit being version one. By using the dialog shown in the slide, you can see the specific mixed reality packages in your project and their individual versions. If you need to file an issue on GitHub, Come here, click the copy button, and paste the data into the report. We believe this system will enable us to be more responsive to the community and to more rapidly innovate on new features and to get them to you much more quickly. You may have noticed on the previous slide that there seem to be a lot of packages in MRTK3. This is true. We have nearly doubled the package count as of the public preview. Instead of a single large package like Foundation in MRTK v2, we are delivering packages around specific feature areas, such as environment. The environment package contains features and components that support both spatial awareness and virtual reality boundaries. Dependencies between these packages are managed and honored by the mixed reality feature tool, as we will see soon. It is important to note that while the core definitions package is, rec is required by all of MRTK3, it has been intentionally kept very small, containing only common type definitions and a very few shared utilities to enable loose coupling and support for expanding functionality via optional packages. Similar to the foundation, the standard assets package has been slimmed down and split into three with the Mixed Reality Graphics Tools package containing updated and much improved shaders. To wrap the packaging story up with a nice little bow, packages are more modular, dependencies have been minimized, and will be delivered via the Mixed Reality Feature Tool. Support for identifying and acquiring optional packages will be coming to the tool in the upcoming months. Okay, enough about packaging and all that stuff. Let's talk about how you're going to get and import these great new MRTK3 packages. The Mixed Reality Feature Tool can be thought of as a warehouse of mixed reality packages from Microsoft. Since its initial release in early 2020, the collection of features has grown well beyond MRTK. It allows you to discover new features, select them for download, and import them into your Unity project. Required dependencies will be automatically identified, downloaded, and imported for you. It is important to note here that the only dependencies supported by the Mixed Reality Feature Tool are those from Microsoft and those from Unity. The tool only downloads Microsoft packages hosted specifically for the Mixed Reality Feature Tool. 
Unity hosted dependencies will be recognized by the Unity package manager and imported automatically by the editor. In order to target packages that are supported by the version of Unity that you are using, the feature tool requires a project. If you have not yet started your project, you can create a new one using the Unity Hub. Be sure to select either a Unity 2020 or 2021 LTS release or a newer TechBranch version. Once the project has been created, you can either leave it open or close it. The Mixed Reality Feature Tool does not require Unity to be running or not running. Let's get started by looking at how to use the Feature Tool. First, be sure to click on the Settings button, represented by a gear, in the lower left-hand corner of the window. MRTK3 is currently in preview. To be able to view the packages, you will need to enable Show Preview Releases in the Feature tab of the Settings page. It is also recommended to have the Auto Update the Catalog button checked so that you can discover new features and package updates as they're released. Next up, Use the Browse button to the right-hand side of the window to navigate to and find your newly created Unity project. Once identified, the Feature Tool will point out the version of Unity that was used to make the project, and then you can click Discover Features to find out what's available to you. To avoid confusion and to underscore the fact that MRTK3 is a completely new product from previous Mixed Reality Toolkit versions, it's being categorized separately, as you can see in the image to the right. The demo that Max will be presenting in a few moments needs the input package, the standard assets package, and the user experience components from MRTK3. It also makes use of the Mixed Reality OpenXR plugin that can be found in the platform support category. Once the packages are acquired, the import features page will show where the left hand list identifies the packages that were selected by you, the developer, and the right hand side required dependencies column shows what was brought in on your behalf based on the, the requirements of the packages to the left. For additional information, you can click on the details link to the right of each of the packages. Before any changes are made to your project, they must be approved by you. To be able to see what's going to be done on your behalf, you can look on the right and see the list of files that will be copied into your project folder under packages slash mixed reality. On the left side, you can scroll down and look at the exact changes we propose making to the manifest. If you would like to see the current and proposed manifest side by side, click on the compare button in the lower left. And that's it. We've just added MRTK3 to the demo project. You can now close the Mixed Reality Feature Tool, either return to Unity or reload the project in Unity and get started. I know we're all itching to get into the demo, but before we do, let's spend a little bit of time talking about input simulation. The MRTK3 input simulator requires the new subsystem for hand synthesis. This subsystem is automatically enabled when using the default MRTK profile. If you are using a custom profile, be sure to go into the project settings and enable this subsystem. With it enabled, you can then add the MRTK input simulator prefab into the scene hierarchy, and then when you enter play mode, you will be able to simulate 
your head, eye, and hand input. If you add the prefab first and enter play mode and nothing happens, go back and double check that the subsystem for hand synthesis is enabled in your project settings. Now, one really exciting thing about the way this was built in MRTK3 is the application, and in fact, Unity itself, can't really tell the difference between actual physical hand input or the synthesized hands. So you know you're testing the full stack within the editor, even if you aren't deploying to a HoloLens. Okay, we're almost back to Max and his cool demos. Let's take a look at what the input simulator can do. Starting with the camera, which represents your head, you can control movement and rotation throughout the experience. And you can adjust the speed and sensitivity of these controls to your personal preference. Eye gaze controls are also available, allowing you to look horizontally and vertically at the world in front of you. And lastly, you have control over the right and left hands. You can add subtle jitter to simulate someone with, a, with tired hands after using them for a long period of time. You can adjust the sensitivity of movement in the depth axis. You can control whether or not pitch is inverted to your taste. And you can alter the hand pose. Do you want it to start with a flat palm in the ready position? Would you like to rotate to have the hand face the camera. All of these things are possible with the input simulator. It is important to note that as of the public preview release of MRTK3, support for motion controller simulation is not yet available. This is on our roadmap and we will keep you posted on our documentation site and in the Hollow Developers community on Slack. And speaking of documentation, you can find out about all of the predefined controls for the input simulator at https colon slash slash aka dot ms slash mrtk3. This information and all the other documentation up there will help you get started and hopefully become very rapidly productive with mrtk3. Now I would like to pass it back to Max, who's going to guide you through setting up your first MRTK3 project. Thank you for listening. So um, in order to get started, let's switch back to the demo Unity project that David just created. Um, I want to mention that although it's not required, but if your target platform is not standalone, for example, if you are targeting Quest 2 or HoloLens 2 or something like that, I would highly recommend closing the Unity project before launching the Mixed Reality feature tool. Um, this way, when you import, uh, after you import the packages after the feature tool, you can go back to this page as the Unity Hub and click on the Editor Version button. Um, and this prompt will pop up. You can directly specify UWP uh, for the case of HoloLens, for example, as the target platform and directly click on Open with uh, the Unity version of your choice, so that certain assets doesn't need to be imported twice, and this way you can save time, because we all know sometimes it takes a while for Unity to import packages. Um, okay, so after clicking on that button, Unity opens, you know, uh, we just gotta wait for Unity to do its job. In, or in order to save some time for uh, more interesting stuff for the live demo, uh, I will just uh, use slides to guide you through this process of Unity uh, importing stuff. So you will uh, in encounter two pop-ups -up, pop during the process. The first pop-up is from uh, Unity's new input system package. It asks you if you wanna uh, enable the new input backend. Make sure you select yes, because MRTK requires the new backends. But in case you uh, unfortunately click on no, uh, you can always change, this, uh, change it manually later by going to uh, player settings, 
um, other settings and find the active input handling um, option down there and switch it to the input uh, system package parenthesis new option. Uh, you will need to restart Unity if you do it manually. So during the process, Unity will um, have another prompt from the Unity's XR interaction toolkit. It asks you if you want to upgrade the XR interaction uh, layer mask. Uh, because this is a whole new project and MRTK3 is uh, built on the latest version of XRI. So you can just click no thanks right there. Those would be the two prompts that you would see uh, during the process of Unity importing all the packages. Um, note, Unity will restart several times in the process, but uh, just bear with it. Uh, it will take a while, but after Unity finishes, you will land here. So let's now switch to a live demo. Um, cool, so this is uh, what you will be seeing after Unity finishes um, importing all the packages. The first thing we want to do here is to configure uh, Unity's OpenXR settings uh, for use with MRTK. The specific settings varies depending on the target device, uh, whether you are targeting HoloLens or something else. I'll just use HoloLens here as an example. So let's say if you are targeting a HoloLens, the first thing you need to do is to click on Mixed Reality Project, apply recommended project settings for HoloLens 2. It will conduct a series of operations in the background um, to apply some uh, recommended settings. And it also pops up this XR management, uh, XR plugin management window. So as you can see, we are currently on the UWP tab. Uh, which is what we use for HoloLens. And now what we need to do is that we need to enable OpenXR plugin for UWP because we want to target HoloLens. Uh, let's wait for a bit for Unity to do its job. Um, cool. And now the next step is that you will see there's a yellow exclamation mark. We can click on it and it tells us, oh, there's two UWP capabilities that they recommend us to enable. Let's just click on fix all, and those will all go away. Cool. If you want to use a remote team with HoloLens, make sure you also switch back to the standalone page to verify initialize XR on startup is on, uh, open XR uh, checkbox here is checked, and also Windows Mixed Reality feature group is enabled. Um, if you are targeting other platforms, you can go to aka.ms slash mrtk3, and there's a setup page um, that tells you uh, what you need for other platforms that we support. So let's go ahead with our journey of setting up OpenXR for HoloLens. The next step is we need to click on the OpenXR uh, page right here. And on this page, we can specify interaction profile which OpenXR uses to pipe um, data from backend into Unity. So currently, uh, the Microsoft Hand Interaction Profile is installed, which means if you de deploy this app onto HoloLens, you will be able to access the hand, uh, you, uh, all the hand data, like hand joints, things like, things like that. But for example, if you also want to use eye gaze information, make sure you click on this button as a eye gaze interaction profile here. Another yellow exclamation mark appear. We can uh, click on it and it asks us to enable the eye gaze um, input capability. Still, we can click on fix all to make it go away. And we are all set here. Again, if you are using remoting, make sure you go back to the standalone page, do the same thing as the eye gaze interaction profile. And we are go uh, good to go here. Uh, just a side note, if you are um, targeting, for example, a uh, Windows Mixed Reality headset, make sure you add the Microsoft Motion Controller Profile or the HP Reverb G2 Controller Profile here, depending on your build target. Um, cool, so we are all set with the uh, OpenXR settings. So the next step, naturally, would be setting up the scene. 
um, if any of you are familiar with MRTK2, you would remember that in MRTK2's scene hierarchy, we always have a prefab, a MRTK prefab, that contains the profile we use for various systems, um, for things like, for example, do you enable sp uh, speech? How do you, uh, how does uh, pointers work? Things like that. But in MRTK3, we redesigned the architecture so that we now build upon Unity's subsystem architecture, which Unity also uses for their XR components. Uh, by using the subsystem architecture, we make sure that we don't clutter your hierarchy like before and give you, uh, give you back more control of your hierarchy. Uh, the MRTK subsystems, although they themselves are not mono behaviors, they also receive update events. So you can do, uh, you can create your own subsystem and perform operations per frame uh, based on what you need. Um, in MRTK3, we still have the concept of profile, but profile is now used to control whether a subsystem is enable, uh, enabled or not. So let's take a look at the MRTK3 profile here. So again, there is no longer a MRTK prefab here, but instead the profile is specified here uh, in the project settings. So by default, this is a new project, so there isn't any profile assigned. So what we need to do is to simply search for MRTK profile right here. Uh, make sure you switch to O to include uh, results from the packages. And we can drag and drop the default MRTK profile here. So you can see on the screen, um, it shows you the category and the specific subsystems that are available in MRTK3. Um, the first thing that stands out might be, oh, there's only like two categories and four subsystems total. Like what happened to the other things? Well, as Dave mentioned, in MRTK3, we have adopted a, a modular, uh, modularized design so that we only put in packages that you uh, actually need. Uh, for example, if you import the Windows speech package, a new subsystem will show up down here uh, that would say Windows uh, phrase recognition system, for example, that you can use to do phrase recognition. But if you don't import the package, it will not show up uh, to clutter your view. So the, so the next observation is that there are some checks box, uh, check boxes over here. Um, a subsystem will be enabled if you have the check, check, box, uh, check box on. And if you click on one of the subsystem, for example, this one, you will notice that um, it tells you some basic information about the uh, subsystem. Well, if you click on another one, like the hand aggregator subsystem, it actually has a field called configuration asset where you can specify certain parameters that is used by the sub subsystem. Not all, not all subsystems requires a configuration asset, but you can simply tell by looking at whether there, there is this field or not. Um, you can create your own profile or configuration asset by simply going to here. Uh, go to MRTK, you can create a new MRTK profile here, and if you want to create a configuration asset for the subsystems, uh, go here. Okay, so for now, what we need to do is to just use the default profile that will work. Uh, make sure you also switch to any additional uh, build target you want to use besides standalone. For example, for our case, it's UWP also assigns the same profile. Okay, now we are good to go in terms of profile. Let's switch back to our scene view. Um, the first thing we need to do is to get rid of Unity's main camera because we will introduce MRTK's XR rig um, into the scene. MRTK's XR rig um, is set up in a way that is similar to Unity's XRI um, XR rig, if any of you are familiar with that. So we have the root here, we have a camera offset, and we have main camera set up here. We also included prefabs for right hand and left hand controller down here, as well as the gaze controller, which we'll use for head gaze and eye gaze. The next 
item we, we need to add to our hierarchy is the MRTK uh, input simulator that Dave just talked about. So we can still, um, we can also just search here and drag and drop the prefab onto the scene. So, okay, so we are actually good to go. This is a basic setup of the MRTK3 scene. Uh, let me turn off the 3D icon a little bit. But this is not exciting at all, right? There's basically nothing there besides our camera rig and an input simulator. So what I would do next is to add some a UX component to the scene. Before I do that, because some of the U UX component depends on Text Mesh Pro, let me just quickly import the uh, essential TMP resources here. Um, it doesn't matter if you don't do it here because there will be a Unity uh, pop-up. I'm, I'm sure that many of you have seen that over and over again. <laughs> cool, so TMP is now imported. Let's take a look at all the packages we have. So Dave, uh, so Dave helped me uh, import this MRTK UX components package. This package contains all the prefabs, um, uh, all the, uh, the majority of UX prefabs in MRTK. So what I need to do is go here, and you can see they are grouped by uh, name of the features. Uh, for today, let's just start with a button, because uh, we all love buttons. So after going into the button folder, you can see there are different subfolders here. In MRTK3, we have two kinds of buttons. Um, the first one is canvas slash direct transform based. Um, as uh, mentioned here, the canvas folder. And the, uh, and the other kind is non-canvas based button as uh, we used to have in MRTK2. Uh, in MRTK2, we also have some canvas based buttons, but they don't look as good. Um, the visual effect is somewhat lacking compared to other non-canvas off offerings. But in MRTK v3, we uh, totally revamped our canvas slash rec transform based buttons so that they also look great. Uh, for more information on that, uh, please stay tuned for um, the building uh, rich UI session coming later. For now, let's just use the uh, uh, traditional non-canvas button for now. You can just drag and drop the um, button into the scene and here you go. So this is the um, this is a button prefab in MRTK3 with a new mixed reality design language that we are adopting through a variety of Microsoft product, uh, including the Microsoft mashup for those of you who have already experienced it. Um, it has a fancier look and feel compared to what we offered in MRTK2. So um, many of you might be familiar with a script on the button called a button config helper. Uh, that script in MRTK2 helps you to configure some of the most frequently used uh, properties of a button. For example, rename uh, the text of the button um, and also um, let you assign certain uh, events, for example, the onclick events. So that script has yet to be uh, ported to MRTK3, but let's just manually change the text here to something more reasonable. Let's just call it button because I'm, I'm out of ideas. Let's just call it button, okay. So now we have a button that is called button. Not exactly surprising. Let me uh, fold the scripts a little bit to show you what are the scripts, uh, what are the scripts attached to the button prefab. Now, just like MRTK v2, we have a lot of scripts here, but for today, uh, I will mainly just focus on the pressable button one. So the pressable button uh, script, just like that of V2, offers you a variety of events that you would want to use with button. Um, the most obvious one being unclicked right here. Um, so let me put the button back a little bit uh, so that it looks good in the game view. And let's... Hook, uh, hook up something to the onclick event. So for that, um, I would just go to go back to the MRTK UX components package, go to slates and drag a slate um, into the hierarchy. Okay, cool. 
So this is a MRTK3 uh, style slate. You can, you can also feel that so the kind of feel is slightly different from MRTK2. Uh, let's place it in a more reasonable place. Um, cool. Uh, the reason I introduced a slate is mainly for it to serve as a background of a text that I am about to ask, uh, to, to add. Uh, let's scale TMP a little bit to make sure that it looks more reasonable and adjust the Z a little bit to avoid Z fighting and then um, the reason I am adding this text is that I want to show you the various uh, events that the pressable button script can fire. Uh, let's make, make the text button state. So now we have a st uh, we have a slate. Uh, this is a text button state here. Let me make it slightly bigger. Okay. So cool. Let's go back to the button. So on the button script, right? There is a unclicked event. Let's just ask, uh, add a new event and assign the text mesh pro on the slate here. Uh, go to text mesh pro. Uh, Scroll down a little bit to find the string text property. And now we can add um, button clicked. Cool. And now we can directly go to the game view and run it. Okay, so now I am in the game view. Uh, like Dave mentioned, um, the MRTK input simulator in MRTK3 is easy to use. Uh, the majority of controls are uh, identical to that of MRTK uh, V2. So you can still use WASD to move up and down, left and right, and use the uh, um, right, right button on your mouse to look around. Okay, so let's bring up the hand by pressing the left shift key. Okay, you can see a hand here. So I can use the hand to trigger a far, uh, a far right click like this. Okay, so I guess the text changed, changed as expected. And if we enter again, we, we can also try out the a poke pointer, a uh, poke interactor we had uh, for near interaction. So if I just move the hand, okay, we can also hear the sound and see that the button is now clicked. So, okay, so that's the most basic event you would need for a button. Uh, what about fancier stuff? Well, let's uh, go back to the inspector and scroll down a little bit. Find the MRTK events here. So under MRTK events uh, foldout, we actually had more events that you could potentially use for a button. For example, you would be able to know when the button is being hovered, either by a gaze ray, by a hand ray, or um, whether it is being hovered by a grab or poke intera uh, interactor. So let's just go ahead and uh, give it a try with the ray hovered event. So for this event, it will uh, get triggered whenever a non-gaze ray um, gets hovered on the button. So for example, a hand ray. So let's just add two events here, uh, still assign the same text mesh pro component. Um, go down this list to find string text property and uh, where, you, where you are. Um, same as this, this one. Okay, let's just say, uh, Ray hover enter and ray hover exit. Cool. So now if we enter the game mode, enter the play mode, and bring up our simulated hand, you can see when the hand ray is on the button, the text changes to ray hover enter, and when it exits, um, the text changes to ray hover exit. 
and then you can still click on the button or poke at the button as before. So, um, cool, let's get back to our slides. So that would conclude the journey of building your first MRTK project. The project showed some really fund uh, fundamental things about MRTK3, but I know you are interested in seeing more. Let's now switch to the flagship sample scene that we ship, the hand interaction example scene. This sample scene incorporates the best of our UX uh, offerings and also shows the different interaction mechanisms that we support. It demonstrates what is possible with MRTK and inspires, uh, and inspires you as the developers to go beyond. So uh, let's switch to our uh, pen interaction example thing. Uh, just like this, cool. Um, so you can actually download this uh, hand interaction examples things uh, today, right now, by going to aka.ms uh, uh, aka mrtk3 and still go to the setup page. There will be instructions uh, to tell you how to download our uh, sample project. And after you download the sample project, you can find the uh, sample things under asset uh, things right here. And uh, some other samples are in uh, data binding example as well. But those are the two places where we have the sample scenes. So if we go to the scenes folder and open up the handling interaction example, um, example scene, let's just get started to take a tour. Okay, now we are in. So this should look very familiar to those of you who have been using MRTK uh, v2. So we had a pretty similar setup. We have a area that shows off uh, our object manipulator right around here. You can drag, it, drag stuff around. We also have some rigid body setup right here. Um, for this section, it's about touch interaction. So if you put your your simulated hand close enough, you can you can see that the uh, the polygons would rotate just like that. Um, and for and for the sliders down here, it is currently uh, set up for um, far interaction. So what that means that you cannot use uh, touch to move the slide bar, but instead you can use far ray like this to move the, uh, to move the slider. And uh, to the left, in the middle part, we have a bunch of button examples like we had in MRTK2, uh, shows you different, uh, a variety of styles that you might want to use. We also had the classic virtual piano down here, although I'm not a pianist, so I can't really play it, but you can uh, definitely explore that. And on the left, we also have the bounce control examples. Uh, so for the bounce control, we also adopted the new mixed reality design language. So for example, for this one, you can notice that there's a different look and feel compared to MRTK v2. And in order to show the handles, you can just um, make sure your ray is currently um, hitting the uh, bounce control and then just uh, click on it and then the handles will show up. You will be able to uh, play with the handles. Okay, so that's the bounce control. We also have the um, old style bounce control uh, sample right here. So this is what many of you are more fam familiar with, the MRTK2 style bounce control. We also have uh, some flattened bounce control examples up, up here. And also to the very left, we have a keyboard interaction example that now works with both uh, HoloLens and Quest. So please try that on device. So before we wrap up, I must mention there are, there are some other um, really awesome sessions that are coming up about MRTK3, all covered my, by my brilliant colleagues. Please don't miss the ones that you are interested in. And also join us for the 
um, ask us anything in session tomorrow afternoon. So that's our session on helping you get started with MRTK3. Thanks for coming. And I think we still have a bit time for Q&A. So um, please let me know if any of you have questions. I will be more than happy to answer. <laughs>